Let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come to you the way we are, with all our brokenness, our wounds, and our struggles. Please have mercy on everyone who attending this service. Reveal to us your will. Heavenly Father, you are our Father. Where else we go? A child cannot go to anywhere other than to the dad. You are our dad. We are your little children. We come to you, Lord. We come to you, Father. Lord Jesus, you are our Savior. You purchased us by your blood. Where else we go, we come to your feet. We come to your cross. We come to you, Jesus. Help us and embrace us. Holy Spirit, we are yours. You are our helper. You are our teacher. We come to you. O Holy Trinity, one God, we are yours. We are totally yours. Let's praise and worship the Lord for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Hala bahala bandira bahala bahala tira bahala rabaria. Shara rara 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 we are yours. We belong to you, Abba Father. We thank you, Abba Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Shala bahalam dira bahalara bariya. Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, speak to us. Lord Jesus, guide us. Shala bahalam dira bahalara bariya. 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 Shala bahalam dira bahalara
spoken harsh words against me see you bring what has taken by violence and is lame or sick and this you bring as your offering shall so accept that from your hand says the lord verse 14 you have said it is vain to serve god what do we profit by keeping his command or by going about as mourners before the lord of hosts see look at this word of god if at any time you have thought the people who are surrounding you they are saying it is vain to serve god so there is there is no god why you serve god why you go to the church why you sing for the lord why you preach the word of god why you you help those who are in the church why you help the parish priest why you sing in the choir why you help in volunteering in the church see what do we profit by keeping his commandment or by going about as mourners before the lord of hosts then we read verse 15 now we count the arrogant happy evil doers not only prosper but when they put god to the test they escape see why people feel so tired so upset when they serve god they find those are not serving god they are prospering more and uh, those who are arrogant they, those who even talk against god they have all the prosperity and you find that you who serve god you who love god you don't find any prosperity but the people who does not even go to church they have all kinds of prosperity then we continue to read see the, the title of this word is reward of the faithful then what happens then those who revered the lord spoke with one another the lord took note and listened and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who revered the lord and thought on his name now comes those who have sincerely served the lord in spite of the heavy challenges they shall be mine says the lord the lord of hosts my special possession on the day when i act as i will spare them as parents spare their children who serve them again verse 18 which is very important to notice then once more you shall see the difference between the righteous and the wicked between one who serves god and one who does not serve him see let us look at this word of god once again you have spoken harsh words against me says the lord yet you say how have we spoken against you you have said it is vain to serve god what do we profit by keeping his command or by going about as mourners before the lord of hosts now we count the arrogant happy evil doers not only prosper but when they put god to the test they escape then those who spoke with one another the lord would not listen and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who revered the lord and thought on his name they shall be mine says the lord of hosts my special possession on the day when i act and i will spare them as parents spare their children who serve them when once then once more you shall see the difference between the righteous and the wicked between one who serves god and one who does not serve him now definitely those who serve god they will have great benefit before the lord when the lord is examining the souls when the lord is going to reward definitely there will be a difference sometimes when we compare our life with others when people only look with material benefit people clearly ask what is a what is the use of going to church worshiping god serving god is there anything good sisters and brothers the good is going to happen on children on children's children there are many uh, parents who are so upset so much confused when it comes to their children they are trying all the prayers they pray for their children they wanted their children to be faithful to be devoted to the lord but you find your children are becoming more and more rebellious arrogant angry they make all comments against the priest they make all comments against the church they refuse even to go for sunday mass or go for confession you find your children are not doing the right thing and you feel so heavy when you think about your children turning against god and today the lord is telling us that did we as parents did we ever make fun of priests did we ever stop going to church did we ever be ashamed of worshiping god it happens then this is directly or indirectly is going to affect the children because the uh, those who serve god what is the benefit of the, those who serve god it is not just for them even for their children i also just want to share with you another scripture this is from the prophet uh, this is from nehemiah it is chapter 13 verse 14 it is prophet nehemiah this is chapter 13 verse 14 prophet is praying remember me remember me oh my god concerning this and do not wipe out my good deeds that i have done for the house of my god and for his service he's saying lord do not forget the good deeds i have done for the sake of you see because nehemiah is a he is a priest he is a prophet he is serving god 
And now what is this request? Lord, please don't forget the good deeds I have done. See, if you look at any priest or anybody who is a powerful instrument of the Lord, see, even in the book of Psalms, this is chapter 102, verse 28. Psalm 102, verse 28. 28 we read, the children of your servants, see, the children of your servants shall live secure. Their offspring shall be established in your presence. The children of your servants shall live secure. Their offspring shall be established in your presence. That means when you, even today, see the great and the good thing with the Lord Jesus is that today, if you return to the Lord, today, if you decide to serve God, today, if you want to uh, spend your time for the Lord, the Lord is going to do something new from today in your generations, in your generations. See, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we read, so if anyone is in Christ Jesus, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. See, if anybody is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. That means even today, if you decide to serve God, to worship Him, to follow His steps, He is going to do everything new because there is, uh, there is new creation. There is anyone who is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. Because again, in chapter 2, chapter 6, verse 2, we, we read that, see, for He says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Look at this word of God. In no other technology, no other science, in no other office, something that if you join in a company, it will take years and years for you to get a promotion, to get a position, to get an acceptance. But when it comes to God, you, you just come to the Lord today itself you receive the day of salvation. See, today, see, see, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. That, to that thief, you know, it's a huge theme in the Holy Bible. To that thief who was hanging at the right side of the cross, what did Jesus tell him? Today, you will be with me in paradise. Today, see, as you listen to me, today, if you are willing to serve God, if you are willing to surrender your life to the Lord, you will receive salvation, not just you transformation in the lives of your children. I remember one day a father came to me saying about his, uh, his uh, son who is into alcohol, who is refusing to go to the university, refusing to study. So he had all these kinds of difficulties when it comes to uh, even going to church. This son was becoming very adamant. This father came to ask, Father, I don't know what to do because I can only let tell my children to obey me, but this son of mine is so uh, angry and I'm afraid that he is going to create a lot of uneasiness even to God. So he was so upset uh, when he was talking to me, he was so sad to explain to me in that way. Then while talking to him, what the, what the Lord has revealed to me is a word of God from the book of Sirach. This is the first time I noticed something, uh, it is Sirach, Chapter 17, verse 22. Sirach 17, 22. See, you have to look at this word of God. Uh, One's almsgiving is like a signet ring with the Lord, and he will keep a person's kindness like the apple of his eye. And there's a footnote for this word of God. And the scripture continue to say, causing repentance on his sons and daughters. One's arms giving is like a signet ring with the Lord and he will keep a person's kindness like the apple of his eyes causing repentance on his, on his sons and daughters. See, if you just continue to read, you will understand afterward he will rise up and repay them. God is going to repay. He is going to bless those who truly serve God. Those who truly worship God, those who truly do almsgiving, those who truly express kindness, God is going to reward those the, the same thing on the people. See in um, in two Chronicles, it is chapter thirty. Two Chronicles, chapter thirty, verse nine. For as you return to the Lord, see. For as you return to the Lord, your kindred and your children will find compassion with their captives and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. What we are talking today is 
there is huge reward for those who serve God, not just you, your children, your children's children, your generations, your descendants forthcoming. This is the history in the world. Look at the history. When somebody, when few people, when they start serving God, God's powerful uh, glory is manifested in their generations, in their generations. Even uh, one day while I was listening to a preaching, a unique preaching, this preacher was quoting a scripture. This is from the book of uh, Romans. This is chapter uh, 16. Sometimes we may just find this may be a very insignificant word, but those who know the word of God and its depth, they know every word has its own powerful presentation. See Romans chapter 16 verse 13 is a word. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and greet his mother, a mother to me also. See, Saint Paul is sending a letter greeting Rufus, whom he say he is chosen in the Lord. And now, why Rufus is chosen? Then only we understand. What is the reason that uh, Rufus is chosen? Mark 15, 21 gives us the reason for that. What is that reason? They cumbled a passerby. Who was coming in from the country to carry his cross? It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. So who is this Rufus? This Rufus is the son of Simon of Cyrene who carried the cross of Jesus Christ. So just because the father carried the cross, the son is getting God's call, God's uh, promise. So if anybody is serving God, if you look at anyone who has really prospered, who has a peaceful life, a peaceful family life, along the history, there is someone who served God. I do remember this family whom we visited for a special prayer because they were conducting a prayer service and we were staying at this home during this uh, prayer service. And this family told, whenever priests come to that country, to that place, they always come to their home. They are very happy to host them and they are always coming there. And the lady in that house, she was telling, it was her grandfather who gave 10 acres of land to build a church in her in her locality so because and her grandparents also did the same see just because they her family members forefathers did serve god did help god's work to continue now the generations are getting blessed 2 timothy 2 timothy 1 5 i also want to read this to you 2 timothy 1 5 it says it's, it's also to know i am reminded of I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and now I am sure lives in you. See, St. Paul, when he is choosing, when he is talking with the, with the Timothy that he is telling, see, uh, you, you can look at it, to Timothy, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. See, uh, Paul is choosing Timothy as his beloved child. Why? Because he knew his mother and grandmother. See, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I'm sure lives in you. Sisters and brothers, your faith as a grandmother, your faith as a mother is planting divine seed in the lives of your children. They will never go astray. Instead, they will turn in serving God. There are many grandmothers, there are many mothers you have a great role in serving God, in worshipping God. Father Joseph Adat, uh, you know, I, I worked with him in UK and we are still together. And Father has told me when he was small, he was just uh, four or five years old. He was in a mountainous uh, area, in a hilly area, early morning. And the church, parish church is little far. His grandmother used to wake him up early morning and and take him to the parish church for daily mass. Early morning as even the sun is not risen before the sunrise because they have to walk every day. So that grandmother's sacrifice, that grandmother's faith, that grandmother's commitment and Father Joseph was telling when a priest is going, the grandmother will immediately kneel down and greet to the Now we know such a who is Father Joseph but such a powerful instrument in the hand of the Lord. And where this faith was planted in him, it is through his grandmother so in the same way when you serve god you worship god you go to church as a grandmother as a mother don't think that this is just in vain or this it has no fruit in it it has great great fruit when you start serving god even in the book of isaiah uh, this is chapter 49 
Isaiah 49, 3 and 4. Uh, people say all these things, but you have to know. And he said, see, uh, from 4, 4 and 5. See, the scripture says, But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. See, when you compare your life with others, you may see sometimes you have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. See, it is servant's mission. How the servant's mission? See, sometimes when you start serving God, you don't see any progress. You're just serving God. You are, if you are an intercessor, you are praying behind the curtain all throughout your life. But remember, God is forming Timothy out of you. God is forming children out of you. God is forming prophets out of you. God is preparing something. The seed that the Lord is planting inside you will go beyond, go beyond. That is why, again, in Isaiah 59 and 21, we read, and as for me, see, this is the covenant that he is making. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you and my words that I have put within you, put, put in your mouth, shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouths of your children or out of the mouths of your children's children, says the Lord from now on. See, when you listen to the word of God, when you listen to the word of God, it is not like anything else. The word that the Lord is planting inside you will go beyond, go more than you, go to your children and children's children. I know a beautiful family in UK. This is a family of Joel, Jesse, Thomas, and Joshua. This is a powerful family, I will say. But in the human eye, uh, Thomas and Joshua have mild autistic. Uh, if you go and stand before Joshua, you will be so surprised. Joshua knows the word of God by heart. Because the parents have, was always in the, in the Lord serving God, doing God's work, helping the priest, and learning the word of God, reading the Bible. Now, when Joshua and Thomas and Joshua was born, they are filled with the word of God. Actually, they don't know, they are going to special school. They don't know how to read, how to write, but they know the word of God. Joshua will write the word of God. One day, I myself have a personal experience that he has little autistic tendencies. And then when I went to him, when I came in front of Joshua, he immediately started prophesying through the word of God. He started to say, Matthew 5, 8, the word of God says that blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8, immediately he said, when I saw him, is the word of God. For truly I, uh, I tell you that it is the, uh, see, 5, 8, blessed are the one who are pure in heart they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Through Joshua, God was telling him, keep your heart pure. Then you will see God in everyone, in everything. Then your sorrow will disappear. What's more important is purity of heart. And when even as parents, even our generations, if anybody is keeping that, that purity is transmitted to the generations. That is being transmitted. So nothing is in vain. Nobody has ever served God in vain. Your generation and generations are going, generations, generation, descendants after descendants are going to be blessed and promoted when somebody is serving God. See, looking at prophet Jeremiah, looking at him, God told him, I know your devotion, even when you were young, even when you were small, God is telling prophet Jeremiah, see, go and proclaim Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord, I remember the devotion of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness in a land not sought. So it is when you are in a difficult, maybe in a prison, maybe in a parish, maybe in a church, even when people are all turning against the parish priest, you are standing supporting the servant of God. You're not accusing those, uh, the, the servants. And what will happen? You and your generations will be blessed. When we are at a retreat in St. Mary's Church in Dubai, a few years back, I met the organizer, this is the, the charismatic chairman. He was telling me, uh, Father, when I was small, my father was always in the church. I did not like him to going to church every day. Even my mother was so angry because he was, they were telling, he has no time to look after his wife and children. 
because he is always in the church doing everything for the parish priest but most of the time the wife she wants to go somewhere she wants to get her help her dad his dad used to give priority to the parish priest telling he is god's representative he got it from his father so it was like this so this son now who is a chairman there he was a little upset because what the mother was talking that you know the dad is responsible not looking after now he's grown up he's married he left his home country he came to dubai he is the ceo of a big company he is very much financially stable and all those things now he is telling me father when i look back all my blessings are due to my dad who served god he is no no more he is not there but he said now when i look back because my dad served god god brought me to this country because my dad worshiped god gave priority to god i have prosperity i have a good family i have a good job i have my own company and when i look back it is because my dad served god never cheated anyone and being faithful to god and now he's telling so i learned that and i know the inheritance my dad left behind me he is serving god so i want to do the same thing for my four kids who are following the way i want to make sure that i leave an inheritance to them not of money not of wealth not of my company but of the fear of the lord and the love of the lord that's why i took up this responsibility of being a chairman but when i was small i did not know i was ignorant i was ignorant i did not know why do we serve god why do we go to church why do we spend all our time with the parish with the parish priest with in the service of god but now i know when i grew up if there is any prosperity in my life when i look back it's god's favor because in my own eyes i have seen the richest people becoming the poorest and the poorest becoming the richest and when i evaluated and looked i found that it is god's favor alone sisters and brothers in the book of ecclesiasticus we read it is chapter 8 verses from 11 the scripture is telling in this way see because sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily the human heart is fully said to do evil you know just because when some people are doing evil and no uh, result is coming up because of the evil the human heart is fully said to do evil verse 12 though sinners do evil a hundred times and prolong their lives yet i know that it will be well with those who fear god because they stand in fear before god look at this word of god and put it inside your heart do you know it do you believe it do you understand the the, the content of this scripture though sinners do evil a hundred times and prolong their lives yet i know that it will be well with those who fear god because they stand in fear before him put this word of god my lord jesus i know Though the sinners do evil a hundred times and prolong their lives, that no harm to come to them. Yet I believe and I know that it will be well with those who fear God, those who love God, because they stand in fear before Him. The Lord is standing before Him, and again, but it will not be well with the wicked. Neither will they prolong their days like a shadow, because they do not stand in fear before the Lord. That means those who do not stand in fear before the Lord, they cannot prolong their life. They will not be enduring. prosperity so to serve in god sisters and brothers may not have an immediate external effect but to the generations what coming is a reward of god's love that's why the scripture it is uh, in the book of proverbs chapter, chapter 3 was 3 let me i just kindly request you put this word of god inside you put this word of god inside you and let it be your motto let this word of god be your motto do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart let us repeat this word of god three times with all your heart repeat this word of god do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart sisters and brothers the the holy scripture is teaching us that we should never abandon loyalty to our god we should never abandon faithfulness in our service to god in serving god in singing for the lord in doing the ordinary work in the lord in doing the intercession for the lord in doing the preaching in doing the counseling in doing the little things the little cleaning that uh, that we do in the church the little faithfulness that we saw do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake us and what we need to do bind them bind loyalty and faithfulness around your neck 
write loyalty and faithfulness on the tablet of your heart let no one misguide us let no one discourage us let no one pull us away from god what will happen we'll have great reward on the generations forthcoming i have seen with my own eyes this god's faithfulness he is going to intervene i have to say that i was last three months i was at my home with my parents celebrating daily mass at home and usually we are not permitted to celebrate the holy eucharist at home it is to be done in the parish or in special occasions we need to get the permission of the parish priest then only we can do it at home and but surprisingly uh, because of covid and because of complete lockdown because the churches were closed down the parish priest gave me permission to celebrate holy mass at my home with my parents and my brother and family my parents every day because they were not able to go to the church even previously there was lockdown they used to come in front of the tv channel and there was holy mass transmitted through the tv channel and they used to dress up as if they are going to the parish church and attending the mass at the parish church not with all the dirty cloth that they use in the house because they are going to attend the mass in front of the tv such faithfulness they had even my brother and the wife and the children so god rewarded their faithfulness and their loyalty to god see nobody is going to notice no outsiders are coming see usually people do make up they do good dress when they go to church because other people are going to see them it's not because god is going to see them because other people are going to see them but my parents were special that i came to know only after i was staying there and my brother was telling me even my parents were doing that dressing even in front of the TV as they were celebrating Mass, attending the Mass on the TV. So the Lord had given me that opportunity to celebrate Holy Mass along with my parents because they did not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake them. They were faithful and loyal in their devotion to God, not to show anyone. It was from their heart because they had they bound loyalty and faithfulness in their neck and they put down uh, the loyalty and faithfulness in the, on the tablet of their hearts. That is what it all happened. And I know God forced me to stay three months celebrating Holy Mass with my old parents because they were faithful. See, this is not just for my parents. This is for anyone and everyone who serve God. Their generations are being blessed. See, look at uh, how God chose and blessed uh, Noah. See, this is Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. These are the descendants of Noah. These are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. See, because Noah found favor with God. See, Noah found favor with God. Because Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord, what happens? The descendants of Noah is also being mentioned here. You as a dad, do you find favor with God? You know, sometimes there are people who complain that my son is not going to church, my daughter is not going to church, my, my um, grandchildren are not being devoted. But you as a father, you as a grandfather, you as a grandmother, you as a mother, can you commit your life to God? Can you surrender your life to God? Descendants are going to be blessed. Descendants are going to be blessed in a mighty way. Descendants are going to be blessed. See, in the book of, uh, again, it is Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 proverbs 13 22 what is what will happen to those who serve god look at this word of god the word of god says the good leave an inheritance to their children's children but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous the good leave those who serve god and those who read lead a righteous life they leave an inheritance to their children's children if you look backward if there is anyone who has prospered any benefit that is coming upon them because they served God. They loved God. They feared God. They worshipped God. Let this, this thing, let this faithfulness, let this loyalty to God, let this faithfulness to God in, be inserted inside you. That will be a transformation for your entire life. Let us now uh, start worshipping God. Let's feel God's powerful presence. God wants to heal us. A mother who is praying for the son who is going to have an open heart surgery. God is consoling this mother. God is going to touch and heal your son. Somebody who is pregnant and you are afraid of miscarriage. God is healing you. God is going to bring you a healthy baby boy. God is assuring you. A religious nun. God is consoling you in your difficulty in your community. God is blessing you. Sister Lucy. God is blessing you and consoling you. Jeremiah. God is blessing you. Calvin. God is blessing you. 
somebody who has a severe stomach problem god is having five points you are already done one operation but he hurt and you are struggling god is healing you bakita god is calling you by name god is blessing you karen god is blessing you jessinda god is blessing you alan god is blessing you somebody who met with an accident and you broke your leg god is restoring health back to you anton god is blessing you clemens god is blessing you god is consoling you god is going to intervene in your difficulty especially the financial difficulties praveen god is blessing you sandosh god is blessing you jennifer god is blessing you a child who is refusing to go to school and the mother and the father they are praying god is going to console this child to go back to the same school because you are not able to afford to send the child to another school ah adira god is blessing you hilary god is blessing you aunt mary god is blessing you god is intervening in your life somebody you had you you were asked to uh, ask to stop your work your job from the end of this month and then you have lot of anxiety fear and stress you don't know what you will do if you lose this job god our god is a miracle working god jacqueline god is blessing you alex god is blessing you amy god is blessing you sherlyn god is blessing you perpetual god is blessing you keep your hand where you have any kind of sickness he is here to heal you maybe you have back pain stomach pain you have sinus you have kidney related problem you have allergy you have vein problem blood related sickness eyesight problem toothache throat infection goiter hair loss surrender everything to the lord stretch forth your hand to the lord jesus i am the lord who heals you listen from the lord and receive healing from the lord god is consoling many teresa god is healing you especially having severe stomach pain god is healing you teresa salome god is healing you from your pain in the liver somebody having kidney stone god is consoling you and healing you sebastian god is calling you by name god is going to help you you are praying for your good health i especially that you are getting overweight god is consoling you god is going to intervene in these difficulties manu god is blessing you immanuela god is blessing you nicole god is blessing you and consoling you somebody you are a couple who is praying for a child for the gift of a child and you are so guilty because in the past you have even thought of even have done abortion and you feel that maybe god is punishing you because of that our lord is telling i'm not a god who came to punish her punish you but i came to rescue you john 3:17 the lord wants you to repeat the word of god says the son of man has come not to condemn the world but to save the world so you are already many from guilt feel is is a god is calling you by name god is blessing you Soman God is blessing you. Sujit God is blessing you. Rohan God is blessing you. Rahul God is blessing you. Somebody who is working with the government, the Ministry of uh, uh, Immigration and Foreign Affairs, God is blessing an officer. Sandra, God is blessing you. Mohan, God is blessing you. Somebody who is not a Christian, you are attending this retreat. You don't know what is going on. You don't know what is blessed sacrament. But the Lord is telling, I know who you are. You are my child. um i have not just come for christians you are also my beloved child god is assuring you ganesh god is blessing you hilda god is blessing you kartik god is blessing you somebody you lost your documents you don't know how to recover it god is going to mysteriously bring it back to you antony god is calling you by name god is blessing you somebody having severe infection on your right leg on the knees god is healing you somebody having a kind of a, a kind of a lump coming on your on your stomach and you are so upset with it is cancer so so god is going to intervene and help you somebody you are going for a driving test it's a practical test several times you attempted and you failed now you have lot of shame lot of pain lot of uh, stress the lord is telling submit yourself to the lord this is 1 peter 5 6 and 7 claim it before you go for the test 1 peter 5 6 and 7 that is submit yourself under the mighty hand of the lord and the lord will help you in due time because he cares for you just repeat it and remind the lord lord i come at your feet you lift me and you are going to succeed in this alfi god is blessing you jessian god is blessing you shiroma god is blessing you 
Hasiya, God is blessing you. Let us feel God's presence. Sunida, God is calling you by name. Sunida, you are serving me. God is telling. It is never in vain. God is assuring you. Sunida. Let us feel God's presence. Let's receive the blessing of the Lord. Lord, I pray, wherever you are, you can keep your head down, bow to the Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray for a new gift, the gift of loyalty in serving. Lord, we know our faithfulness and our loyalty to you never go in vain. It will come back to us as great fruit for our children, children's children and generations and descendants forthcoming. Lord, give us an unfailing heart to serve you. Give us an unfailing seal to love you so that our generations are being blessed. We bring to you our children who are going astray. We believe and we know through our faithfulness, through our prayer, through our devotion, through our worship to you, our children can be retained to you. They can be faithful children in your service. Lord, as we serve you, we claim our children to be priests and nuns. As we serve you, as we worship you, we pray for protection for our children from all evil affairs, evil calamities of this world. Lord, I pray a prayer of deliverance upon the children who have been affected and afflicted by evil dark forces of this world. Let them be protected as we serve you, as we are coming in front of us, we are in your presence, as we have gathered in your name, as we worship you, as we are in front of your blessed sacrament. Lord, we claim protection for our children, protection for our generations for coming. Let no pollution of sin affect and afflict our children and the generations coming, Lord. We are here to worship you, we are here to honor you, we are here to respect you, Lord. Let you be honored, you be respected and honored. Lord, I claim and I seal everyone attending this retreat in your holy, precious blood. Bless them, Lord. And everyone who are serving you, their children and generations, be blessed according to your promise. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please keep me in your prayer and uh, pray for us, for God's work to continue. So I need your humble prayer. I, be I beg you to pray for me, maybe 10 Hail Marys before you go to sleep. So may Almighty God give you all the blessings, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.